Oh. No worries. This is it. All the clues are coming together. Oh. Oh, great. Will we finally learn? Will we finally achieve enlightenment? Exactly. It's happening. Heck. It's, yeah. It's happening. What's going on? Heck everyone? yeah. Hey, this is it. I'm excited to be playing with all your lovely people. All my dear, oh, Jesus, all my dearest friends. Hey. Back hey, here. Hello once. again. What's going on, Scotty? Uh, not much. Took my, I took my uh, depression nap earlier today, so I'm good now. No worries, dude. You gotta do what you can to survive. This is mm -hmm. a, this is a PSA from uh, everyone here at Dungeon Attack Squad Live. Um, take care of yourself. Okay, you gotta look out for number one. Exactly. <clears throat> and if anybody gets mad at you for doing that, then uh, I I'd argue that they aren't really your friends or have your best interest in mind. That is that is very true. But all right, gotta so, be there for your friends. Exactly. And you are truly your best friend. All right, so. Went to uh, turn everybody's user volume up, and I clicked on myself to try and raise my own volume, like I can't hear myself. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, you guys had just met a little, uh, a little sneaky individual who's been spying on you in that, uh, in that little, in Johan's beer house. You're still in uh, Grumberg. The uh, Harvest Festival that they've been talking about is but a m measly day away, and you've been invited to stay there. But uh, while you were sitting in the, you know, the tavern, sort of uh, debilitating over what to do next, because um, the circumstances of the original mission, I'd say, have gotten a little complicated with the addition of uh, this local tyrant, Martin Alko the Third. And so, uh, you know, Doran, rightfully so, is concerned about, like, the well-being of the mission and the well-being of uh, you guys. So, one of the things that you talked about was whether or not you should actually have the writ of passage that is essentially going to allow uh, you guys to move through Ulker's land with that carav like, you know, that uh, carriage unimpeded, like, relatively speaking. That is to to avoid paying the very exuberant fees that Martin Olker has set to uh, essentially straddle local um, I'd say local uh, cavern owners. Jesus Christ, I really gotta fix that. Local cavern owners and local uh, just people who how should I say people who uh, are trying to do business in the local region from getting you know hit with absolutely catastrophic fees. But uh, I digress. Let's continue on. You had just met your, uh, I guess, essentially an elvish spy, like a wood elf spy, who's been watching you debilitate over this. You've cornered him. Uh, you've beat him within an inch of his life. Or rather, I should say, wobbly beat him within an inch of his life. <laughs> and uh, now you are conversing on as to, I think, what to do with him, essentially. What do we do with this guy? Well, it seems to me that after our little conversement, I wouldn't say he's really a threat or an enemy or something, just more a concerned a concerned individual who, who knows, could become an ally. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, I'll preface this by saying that he mainly was watching over you because you took interest in uh, the... Uh, Essentially, uh, what you can gather as being a, uh, how should I say, a splinter group in the local area that is trying to usurp the tyrant Martin Olker III from his throne, uh, a, a individual known as uh, Mattius. Right. Wait, so the leader is named Mattius, or is the elf is named Mattius? Uh, the elf, I don't believe he's told you his name yet, but um, oh. the, the reason why he is listening in on you is because you had mentioned the name of that uh, individual, Mattias. 
And based mm -hmm. on the information that you have so far, Mattius seems to be some sort of a uh, splinter faction, like a secret splinter faction in this uh, land that's trying to remove Martin Ulker the Third from the throne. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly how much information you guys have so far, but his, I, I believe I did say his last name, excuse me, uh, his last name is, uh, his last name is Mattias Galloy, which would imply that he's some, maybe some sort of an heir to the founders of this realm. Galloy. Indeed, because you are, after all, in the marches of Galloy. Well, that would make sense. sense. That makes sense. Well... Uh, as... Well, I will ask, uh, I'll talk to the elf, I say, like, so, wait, we never asked your name, actually, now I realize it, quite rude, but... He says that his name... I'd like to know the names of people who are spying on us. <clears throat> of course. He says, he says, my name is Aloran. I'll just, I'll just, like, type that in the chat so you can see the pronunciation, I guess. Uh, I mean, judging by his garb, he seems like some sort of a uh, a wayfinder of some sort, like a tracker, hunt a huntsman maybe even. Mm -hmm. Well, as thrilling as as much as I'd like to be involved in a a good insurrection, um, we do have uh, pressing matters of our own. We've all sworn to a task at hand and um i don't think he's a a threat though from what we've surmised in the past mm -hmm. uh, it took us what 30 seconds to deal with him <laughs> yeah i just concerned I'm, I'm thinking this could this could be an opportunity if he's going around trying to cause you know like kind of, kind of like a, not not a civil war like a return to the throne maybe he can get us out of the land, so we don't have to worry about good old. I keep forgetting his name. The uh, Martin the, main, the main guy. Yeah, Martin Olker. Mar Martin Olker, thank you. No worries. Yeah, so we don't have to worry about Olker and you know owing him anything. So my, what I hear, Mar Martin Olker is not the kind of character we want to be associating ourselves with. Some might yes. even call uh, him the antagonist. Mm. Indeed, if you had to wrap it all up in a tidy little bundle. Yes, and I believe we are men of class and honor and dignity. I do not think we should associate with such a being. But, how do you pronounce it again? Illorin? Uh, Illorin. Illorin. But this Illor I already tr I can... Not exactly, I can't say trust, but I believe Illorin has much more goodwill towards us than... I'm really bad with names. I forget it already. Olker. Olker does. Well, he did yeah. try to shoot me with an arrow, but, you know, with the best intentions. That is true, but I mean, like, we, you, how, hasn't all of us shot an arrow at someone who we thought was a threat before we talked to them at one point? I've actually never shot a bow, but I, I take your meaning. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, that where, where, I, where I was raised, that's pretty much just how old friends said hello. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> sure they would aim to miss just to kind of you know give you a little spook but you know it's kind of like a just camaraderie thing you'd all sort of gather in a circle and shoot the bow straight up in the air and then just see who would stand there the longest <laughs> yeah, it's a good old game of chicken <laughs> uh, Lauren says to you all um, uh, I, I'd hate to interrupt your conversation but um I don't believe it would be wise for me to stay here much longer. If we if we have need of you, though, how how can we find you? He he says, um, you had mentioned before that you have need of passage safely and secretly through these lands. Mm -hmm. Now, you all seem of reasonably decent character. You haven't uh, threatened to send me to Orca's clutches in return for any sort of 
amount of coin, though it may be in your repertoire. But I am forced, granted the situation, and I mean, he is kind of like, you know, half dead on the floor. Given my current situation, I... I believe that we have some something to gain from one another's company, I should say. And he says, uh... Whenever you're ready, meet me at the end edge of town, close to the forest on the north. And I shall take you to a discreet location. And, well, God's willing, you may even get the chance to meet my lord. And he will determine what it is that he wishes to do with you. Now, this isn't some sort of an ambush. Trust me, we, we want an end to all unnecessary conflicts in this region. We wish for it to return to a land of peace, as it did when the Geloids were in power. But, as you know, we are forced into a precarious situation, and things may not always go as planned. Mm. But I will see, I will vouch for you. I will see to it that if and we are forced to debilitate, that some level of gain will come towards you in some way, shape, or form that may help you on your journey. Well, I believe I can speak for all of us when I say we appreciate it and we hope this leads to a beautiful relationship. I mean, with that, he's he, at this point, he just wants to be let go so he can, you know, go back to hiding. Mm. Is the bar brawl still going on? Um, right now, it's, it's calming down. Like, people are just kind of leaving because, you know, it's just like, at this point, why even stay? They're, prob they're causing a ruckus and they don't want any... They don't want the local authorities to... A be they don't want to be incriminated in any evidence to their uh, wrongdoing, I should say. Mm -hmm. So right now, people are just trying to pile up. Uh, I forget who uh, who hired us again. I keep I, like I said, I'm bad with names. No, his, dude, his name is Doran. Doran, yes. So what's Doran at? Is he still still drinking? Uh, Doran is uh. I mean, he's not in the bar. He he took his uh, he took his bit of the kit, and he sort of uh. I mean, he I mean uh. The reason I say that is because you can tell that it's not there, but neither is he, and his uh mug is still on the table, where he was at. Hmm. He, right down the bar keeps just trying to like you know, r r like upright furniture and like you know. Some some but of the tables so are overturned and stuff like that. He's trying to put stuff back. Yes, but so Dor Doran is nowhere to be seen. Not in the bar, at least. Huh. Does anyone else notice a uh, lack of employer around? Well, he did tell us to keep a low profile. True, true. Did he leave any... Is there, like, over to his mug, did he, did he leave anything? Uh, nothing but a single go uh, gold coin. Oh, uh, okay, then. Like, um... Well, hopefully he hasn't gotten himself into too much trouble. Is the Probably. is the guy the um is the Lauren still there? Have we let him go? Uh, I mean not so far. I fear. I mean you haven't explicitly said that you're letting him go, so I'd assume he's still there. Okay. No, I, I say we I say we let him go. Yeah, I mean I have nothing against that. No, uh, no mm. hard feelings. Mm -mm. You know what? I want to cover like all. I want to make sure. I'm gonna make sure that he is who he says he is. I'm gonna use command and th say truth. I'm gonna try and just t make make sure that he's not, you know, pulling our leg or like or making anything up, leaving anything out. All right. Yes, to make it. So, yeah. Yes, I, uh, wisdom saving throw of, yep, yeah, 12. Alright. Let's see if he makes it. Skadoosh. 
that is on the GM layer. He rolled an 11. Oh, okay. So, oh, 11 total. So, yeah, he fails? Yeah, that would be a fail. Yeah. Oh, okay, lovely. So, yes, I just look into his eyes. And I, just, in, a, in a very low, gutter voice, just say, Truth. Uh, all right, so what are you going to ask him? Okay, uh, so it's like, uh, are you, uh, are, do you have any ulterior motives for bringing Malloy to the throne? <clears throat> he says, first off, it's Galloy. Second off, uh, Galloy, Galloy, <laughs> right. He says, second off, it's, uh, he says, uh, Marius in his youth had saved me from a an extremely dire circumstance. I am indebted to him. I wish to repay it. I have nowhere else to go but to his service. Alright. I I believe him. My I say cut him loose. Group vote. Yeah, he can go. Yeah. Alright then. So I just like kinda of untie him and say so Edge of Town, north side, you say. He says, indeed, near the base of the hills. Will he be in town for a while? Well, I mean yeah. Like I guess he asks you how long do you plan on staying? Well our employer said something about a festival. I don't know, I'll probably have to be sure of that tomorrow. He says, uh well, he says uh I'll hang in the general area. All right. Well, stay safe and Godspeed. And with that, he escapes out like a sort of a back window. Mm -hmm. like, he could have used, just used the door. It'd probably be less conspicuous that way. It's all right. He could right. have, but what's the sense in a life not lived to the fullest? Mm -hmm. If you're gonna jump out a window, jump out a window. Mm. So, we're totally not actually going to meet with these people, right? I'll say I, pre I prefer to meet with them rather than, than Ulker. Ulker seems like the kind of person who would twist your actions if, if, if it meant that he can get what he wants. Yes, but I don't think deposing him is the quickest way from point A to point B, although it is something that I I might like to, uh, I don't know, just mm. seems exciting. Especially, yeah. especially aligning with someone as incompetent as that. I mean, you, you're worried about something, so you try to kill the people that you're worried about in a, in a busy tavern, and then you fuck it up that badly, and then you ask them for help? Are you kidding me? Those well, are the people reason. that we're gonna put our trust in. Well, there's a reason people are some people are are underlings. Let's say. I would. I honestly think it's not much harm, just checking in, just to t test the waters. Yes, so I and... think they could help, definitely help us at least get out of the country to uh, to get to get to our mine. And. Um... In his defense, I'm I'm not your average Cory. I uh, I'm wily. I'm wobbly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you kind of kind of are off balance, aren't you? Just swaying. He it, he definitely didn't uh, anticipate the uh, the nature of the engagement, or else he might he might he may have prepared himself accordingly. Mm. Look, we can we can work with these people if you guys think that's the right call, but it's not going to be a simpler process, I don't think. I think it, we are going to get involved in, and wrapped up into something a little more than we are anticipating at this point. Which is what I'm weary of, uh, or leery of myself, yes. as we did promise our employer uh, a somewhat swift and somewhat safe passage to his mind's uh, after that is concluded, um, it's something that I would like to discuss. This land is definitely uh, in need of someone less tyrannical. 
Oh but, yeah, for sure. Um, and I'm not opposed to being involved in that, but at this time I have made a deal. Uh, and when I strike a deal, I don't. I'm not keen on going back or altering the terms. Mm. I understand. I'm not saying that we should get directly involved in their strife. I just I'm saying that we should consider them a possible ally to further our employer's goals. We could meet with them and press them for safe passage to the mine. Uh, if they deliver, then afterwards we can consider their side more strongly. Mm -hmm. That sounds yeah. Let's get something out of it before we volunteer our services. That sounds a little more reasonable to me. They did try to kill us. Uh, try is a yes. strong word. That's well. That's that's where I take issue here. Not not only did they try, they were bad at it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, some of my best friends tried to kill me. Causes. Uh, people to make mistakes i i know firsthand yes well i believe this might be something to consider more after uh with with the rested head so if you don't mind gentlemen i think i'll be taking my leave upstairs <clears throat> i'm going to stay up a bit i'm way too sober right now <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you guys get out of the back room. You guys uh, clip out of the back rooms. <laughs> no, that is an obscure meme. But uh, you, you guys get out of the back room, and uh, Johan, who's just just finished clean, clearing up the place, by now it is quite late. He says, uh, "You you're all still here." Yes, we wish to uh, we wish to offer you our patronage. He says, "How much does a room?" Uh. uh he, uh, that is a slightly good question. Hold on. Whoops. That is. Let, Check I'll... out the DM, DM guide. Hell yeah. I want to, I want to make sure I get the exact number. I feel that it's perfectly reasonable whenever tavern owners stumble over information like this. Cause when I'm at work and someone asks me the price of an item, I have to turn around and look at the menu. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I don't know, man. It changes all the time. It's uh, nine ninety five today. Mm. Yeah, it definitely does happen. Luckily, I have the DMG right here. Okay. All right. I'm on the wrong page. Um, oh, I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> Hold on. List of expenses. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba -ba. No, there's not actually... I don't think there's actually a chart for it, but I did find one thing, though. Um, <clears throat> it is a... That actually doesn't seem right. Oh, I found it. <laughs> I found it. I found it. Okay, so it is five silver pieces per day. Okay, five silver. That's, that's fair. I'm going to keep that open. Yeah. Toss him, to, toss, him to, toss him to silver. Gentlemen? Toss a coin to your witcher. <laughs> right, I say, well, gentlemen, I wish you a good night. I'll see you all in the morning. It is quite late. Yeah. And Connor doesn't, Connor doesn't usually drink, so. <clears throat> I'll have a few drinks and then hit the hay myself. Yes, uh, nothing, nothing good ever happens after, like, two in the morning, so it's a shame to go to bed, but if we have a mm. big day tomorrow, I suppose, turn in as well. Yes. Alright, fantastic. Uh, you guys had leveled up previously, so... Technically, you're not even supposed to level up until after you make a long rest, which I found, uh, 
I didn't find that recently, but I kind of factored that in. I was like, wait a second. But it's it, it all works out since you're all resting now. So anyway. Level 2. Fantastic. Uh, you guys all took care of it, I'm assuming. I feel paladin here. <laughs> that would make sense, considering you are one. Oh my god. But no. It is the new morning. And, uh... Wobbly, uh, it, the only thing that happened, uh, while you were up drinking more was that, um, <clears throat> uh, Doran came back into the tavern and basically, like, was, was, he was trying to, like, barter, he wasn't trying to barter necessarily, but he was trying to make a deal with the, uh, bartender to let him stay, since he might have overdone it a little bit in the, uh, in the bar tussle. So he kind of got kicked out. Mm. I vouch for him. <laughs> it all, He's they, a good man. Basically, like started it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the bar, the barkeep, uh, he, he lets him stay, but he has to pay double. And he's like, "All right, fine." Uh, at first, he's like, D "Double," and then he just like crumbles and, and reaches into his pouch and just basically like flicks two silver pieces at him. Or rather, uh, sorry, like uh, ten silver pieces out of Because mm. I said it was five. Anyway. But with that, he's finally allowed to stay in. So long... I mean, the, the, the tavern keeper doesn't seem to mind. You know, brawls do happen so long as you're at least willing to pay him. For your, uh... For bothering him so much. Mm. But besides that, uh, he's allowed back in and... You guys finally get your rest. Huh. All right. Ah, oh, money. The answer to all life's problems. It is the new morning. Uh, I guess technically this would be when I'd also like do lifestyle expenses since that is a rule, but don't worry about it. All like, right, then. Yeah, Doran's going to just have that covered for you. What do you mean by that? So that we don't have to worry about like rations and stuff like that? There, it's, it's like a... It's basically like, uh, how should I say? Like, it, they, they, they blanket all, like, armor upkeep and, like, weapon upkeep and other shit. Like, like you know, equipment upkeep under, like, living expenses. And, like, it, it, it okay. varies from squalid to aristocratic. And basically it determines, like, you know... Oh, it's, it's very... You know how 5e is, how it kind of, like, blankets a lot of shit underneath, like, one sort of price tag or whatever. But uh, I'm just saying, like it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a moot sort of rule, to, especially with these circumstances. So I'm just ignoring it. Okay. But all right. New well, morning. in the morning, oh, I yeah. would like to I would like to get up just maybe talk to. I'm I'm guessing uh, the barkeep is still there, or maybe like someone different just taking over a different shift the innkeep. <clears throat> nope, still him. Uh, but wh whoever's there, I'd like to inquire them about. Uh, any, any good blacksmiths in, in the town? And he says, uh, well, uh, you're in the right, you're in the right town in Gellar, I'd say, if you're looking for a good blacksmith. I'd say head over to the Dwarven Quarter. Dwarven Quarter. Oh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Right. And I guess I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just wait for everyone else to, everyone else to come down before we go get along with our day. As soon as Doran hears that you're heading over to the dwarves, he says, Hold on! I'm coming! What? From, uh, he, said, he yells from up the stairs. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, Jesus. But he says, uh, you just hear him, like, you know, you just hear, like, erratic sort of sounding stomping. And then it gets very, very loud. And just starts becoming quite obnoxious. Until you hear him start tumbling down the stairs, because I guess he lost his footing somewhere. Oh. Oh, geez, I'm gonna try and catch him at the, when he as, as he hits the bottom. <laughs> All right. Um. You think that would be like a dexterity saving throw? Or... I, I think so. Just to get over there quickly. Yeah, so. yeah. Just, just I'll, I'll blanket the whole experience under there. Dex save. So yeah, go ahead. All right, dex save. Okay. Better what it could. Better what it mostly usually is. All right. He lands like a sack of potatoes in your arms. Like, oh, 
It's okay now. I've got you. Stand off like you sound excited to go to go to the dwar what was it called? Dwarven Quarter. Forge or like a, like just it's a, just just a I mean a, the, like quarter as like a like a literal term dwarven. for uh like a, a section of a town or a section of a you know Oh okay, Dwarven Quarter. Area. Okay, I got you. I got you. Exactly. And he says Are you are you a blacksmith yourself? He says, uh well I knew some. But, uh, <clears throat> it is the main reason why we're here. You see, I, uh, well, no offense to anyone else here. There's no one else in the bar. Uh, <laughs> no offense to anyone else here, but I think we can all agree that dwarf craft is the best craft. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty great. Alright, so. Let us see what my kin have to offer. Mm -hmm. It will surely be would, something great. Would you like to wait for the other two, or would you want to just go on? And he's just gonna he's just gonna yell very obnoxiously upstairs, waking probably a bunch of other patrons as well. <laughs> you know, basically yelling for Wobbly and uh, and uh, you, Arlo. I'm coming. Jesus. <coughs> How much that is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was gonna. I was gonna. I was about to reprimand him for being rude, but then I realized he's my employer. He's giving me money, so I bite my tongue. So that's my manager. <laughs> so this is this is the hour that people traditionally get up here. This is the hour that goody two shoes traditionally get up here. Ah. People that don't have fun the night before get up. Oh, I well, need uh, some hair of the dog. <laughs> I have... I can't possibly fathom a guess as to what that means, but uh, I've been up for two hours. My schedule is usually a lot busier than this. <clears throat> well, get your breakfast, fill your tanks. We're going to the Dwarven Quarter. Ah, that's where they keep all their dwarves? Yeah, something like that. All right. So, um, uh, the barkeep is, uh, I mean, he's well aware of how much you drank, so he's willing to give you a hair, you know, the hair of the dog, uh, free of charge, wobbly. Because, uh, you, for someone that small, he's, it's pretty absurd how much, uh, alcohol you put away last night. He's like, here, you probably need this a lot more than I do. And he just sort of slides it over. You are right. <laughs> he sort of looks... He doesn't look at you in, like, a disgust face, but, you know, he looks at you in, in, in that sort of, like, a... You know, like, Jesus, look at you go, you know? <laughs> just like you... Like, you're, like you just watched your freaking, uh... Like, you watched, like, a family member just, like, get hit in the head with a fucking baseball or something. But oh, anyway... Nice. But anyway, Doran is eager as hell to meet his kin in the Dwarven mm. Quarter, and uh, he is eager to have you all join him. What say you all? Oh, I would definitely, sure. I would definitely be in interested. All right, Doran says, "Ha ha! This is when the adventure really starts picking up. Just you wait. Nothing's gonna stop us on our way to this one." And. Uh, he, he pushes open the uh, doors to the tavern and uh, walks about maybe 10 feet and you all are jo like well right in front of you uh, you see a uh, I almost said motorcade <laughs> you see a troop of uh, what look to be uh, armored men on horseback with one that looks particularly well armored and he has a, a bandage over his face uh, wobbly uh, how good is your is your memory the morning after? Oh, it's fine. Oh, okay. I'm hungover, but it, I don't forget things. Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> that is the man that you punched to start the fight. Hey, that's the guy I punched to start the fight last night. Oh. And, and you hear, the man on the horse yells, I'm the guy you punched to start that fight last night. <laughs> oh, no, you got me mixed up with somebody else, buddy. You got the wrong guy. <laughs> he, he says, no, I never forget a face. My I've got one of those faces that 
everybody seems to remember for the wrong thing. Uh, roll a deception check if you're trying to deceive him. I would like to. I, 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 if I can, I help him. Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking like a lot of them look the same. Let's be honest here. What are you trying to say? I'm mm. trying to say I don't. I'm not good with faces. <laughs> we all look the same. That's. That's racist. <laughs> That's very racist. You know, just try and make the guy on the horse uncomfortable because no one likes, you know, oh. racist. <laughs> Thrown at him. <laughs> hit him. Uh, hit him from the what's the what's the phrase? Hit him from the left field or whatever. Uh, <laughs> and now Connor feels bad. He's like, oh no, my attempts to help have been ruined. Uh, Doran yeah, is just totally yeah, totally different guy. Okay, <laughs> so he's gonna. I mean, I, I guess this would be a, a contest. I, I guess it is really whatever I want. So, memory is intelligence, so I'm going to roll a d20. Wow. Ah. <laughs> yes, like, definitely someone else, not me. He says... <sighs> and he sort of looks at you. And he says... Uh, well, when you find the one who did it, tell them that I'm looking for them. Yeah, What's your sure. name? What's your name? He says, uh, his name... Hold on. Jesus. He is Sir Glenn. Sir Glenn? Yeah. Okay. Of... Of Glensdale, or... What is he <laughs> Sir of? He is, uh, Sir Gl Wait, is that how it works? I don't think so. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh jeez, but no, he's he's Sir oh. he's Sir Glenn who um he basically just tells you that he serves uh under the um how should I say he serves under the banner of uh, Lord Bruckthorn, which is marked by marker eighteen on the map, his castle. It's just down the road. Oh okay, lovely. The local lord well. of this uh, small sliver of land. Well, whoever, whoever punched you in the face would do well to fear Sir Glenn. He says, Aye, indeed. My honor has been besmirched, and surely it shall be regained. He's so eloquent with his words, intelligent too. <laughs> Just gonna flatter the guy. <laughs> <clears throat> and he's gonna tell, tell his men to search this entire town. This uh, scourge to society must be found. Absolutely, I wholeheartedly agree. He's, he says, a proper investigation shall commence right now. Yes, oh, absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. Good, but good luck. We'll let you know if we find anything. <laughs> and uh, he gallops. He basically, did all the men just gallop away, you know, to go look and ask questions and other stuff like that. Wobbly, did you besmirch that man's honor? I don't know, do you... Do you tend to think getting punched in the face is a besmirchment of your own? Um. Everyone should get punched in the face once in a while. Yes, yes. It's all honor until you get punched in the face. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how the saying goes, I think. Yeah. Doran says, that was relief. Let's go to the dwarf quarter. Mm-hmm. I'll say to Wobbly, like, hey, sorry about that whole, you know, saying you look alike. I'm just an idiot. Oh, I'm an idiot care. who tried to make things better and I made them worse. <laughs> um, you were fine. I just wanted him to go away. Okay. All right. Well, I think we were able to do that. All right. As you venture to the Dwarf Quarter, which is... Only a minute's walk. It's not a particularly massive town. Past the uh, the stone garrison tower of the uh, local, you know, the uh, the local garrison. <laughs> That's the word. And past the church of the. Hold on, I have to get the exact word. Because I don't want to give you guys the wrong information. Mm. Good to have continuity. Exactly. This will not take long at all. Uh, 
So, Wobbly, this whole alcohol thing, have you built a tolerance at all, or is it just, is it like the first time every time? I'm not well versed in the realms of drinks. I don't know. I can just drink it and enjoy it. No, no I never said, oh, yeah, you can. I'm just saying, like, do, do you, is it, did it ever get hard, does it get harder for you to get drunk? No. <laughs> okay. Well, well, for one, it's so always, always really hard to get drunk. Ah. Uh, and I well, you buy your... the the goal isn't so much to get drunk as to enjoy it, right? Uh, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. It it's fun. Mm. <laughs> but anyway, Might consider buying your booze in bulk. Never really had enough coin to do that. Anyway. Well, we'll have to see once our job is done. All this. That's the plan. You know, all this talk of of booze and has got me uh, personally thirsty for a uh, a red stripe. Honestly, that's a good one. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it is a church for the disciples of the flame, and as you pass by, uh, Connor, they mm -hmm. all uh, you know the the females of the congregation they they're swooned by your presence, and uh, the men bow. In a sort of silent no. respect. The, the, thank you. Thank you, humans and others. Uh, always be excellent. I walk away very <coughs> uncomfortable. Yeah. The, uh... Into a silent image, like a bunch of doves flying away behind him. <laughs> 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 uh, they all yell things like, uh... You know, uh, like as you walk away, like the flame bless you and uh, stuff like uh, just just a bunch of really archaic sayings and stuff like that. Mm. Again, like I mean, I, I could go more into it, but only if you guys are really interested in the uh, mythology surrounding uh, the, I guess surrounding why they revere Connor so much. But anyway, is is there like uh? Is there, like, an actual, like, flame or whatever, like, nearby? Um, or... I mean, the the closest one that you'd probably be going to now is the, uh, is the Flames of the Forges in the Dwarven Quarter. Oh, yeah, no, but I it... just wondered while he was addressing them to, like, Thaumaturgy the Flame. Oh, to, to make uh, it, like, burst or whatever? To, like, change color, just give it a real oomph. He's like, just don't... Don't be dicks. And the flame's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, how about this? There's like, um... What kind of open flame would there be? Okay, how about this? There's someone who's burning... Uh... I don't, I don't want to say, like, flotsam or whatever. It's just someone just, who's just, like, burning discarded wood nearby. To turn into like charcoal or whatever. Yeah, there's like a charcoal maker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about that? There's a charcoal maker. Yeah, we'll just we'll just emphasize his uh. We'll just put him more into the situation that he's not comfortable in being in. <laughs> by you know. Trying to reinforce their admiration for him through a uh, magical wonder. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I I cut out for a bit, so I don't want to hear it now. Is he like? Are you trying trying to make you look good in front of everybody? Oh yeah, so oh. that they they keep making you uncomfortable because oh, this is highly entertaining oh. to watch you have to try and come up with speeches on the spot. Uh, uh, I von Smuzeldorf or I don't know, crap shit. No, I just I, <laughs> once I sit with see once I start cursing, then I start keep on like fuck no shit. Ah, it's like came. I just keep on can't think of words to say, so I just start mumbling to my mumbling and going all sorts of, all sorts of stupid crap. Speaking of buffoon of myself. <laughs> yeah, I get you. Anyway, this obviously pleases the disciples of the flame, and uh, one of them, like uh, who you can only assume to be the head of the congregation, says uh. My friends, this is a sign. We must prepare. And they all hurry into the uh, the church, quote-unquote. 
I'm using church as like a as like a sort of blanket term, because uh, I mean you you guys wouldn't really know what the name of the exact building or the house of worship is. <laughs> Wonder what they're preparing for. Yeah. If, if the yeah if the, if the main main guys are there, like prepare prepare how what prepare what. Are you asking that question? Yeah. And he says, uh, one of the, uh, lesser disciples, like, you know, like, a probably like a newly, uh, I almost said indoctrinated, uh, a newly <laughs> enlisted, that's a better word, because he kind of did it willingly, a newly enlisted, an uh, enlisted monk, he says, uh, oh, uh, they're of course preparing for the passing of the torches. It is a very, very special ritual. In which we pass around one torch amongst each other. And we hand the townsmen one, and everyone gets involved. It's going to be great. We're going to be doing it during the festival. But uh, the thing is, you cannot do it all the time. There has to be some... There has to be something that makes you... Uh, how should I say? Uh, something that makes you happy happen. You know, just, it's a celebration. It's bad luck to do it when there's not something interesting happening. What? Oh, okay. And he says, uh, your presence surely has marked good luck and possibly even good tidings in the future. So uh, we are, you know, making our gratitude known to Urzar and to all of Dragonkind to, so that they may know that we appreciate all that they do for us. Well, some of Dragonkind. And he, uh, you know, obviously m remarking towards the more uh, nefarious members of the uh, race. Yes, there are certainly some that are of ill rebuke, but you know what, man? Whatever floats your boat. All right. Doran is, uh, he, he shoes the monk away, and he's like, I saw him first. Go on. <laughs> he says, all right. I, I look at Doran. Thank you. He says, all right. Dwarf quarter time. Dwarf quarter. And, uh, he, he sort of rubs his hands, and he's, uh, He's really excited to go. The dwarf quarter is a very small section of the town. It's a, a group of houses. Well, it's a group of forges with houses on, like built on top of them. So, like, you know, after the dwarves are done working, they just go home, basically. And just sort of bask in the smoke from their forge. Exactly. Nice. You know, he... He says to you all, uh, gentlemen, let me handle this. And, uh, he starts, you know, remarking and starts, uh, making all kinds of gestures and sounds, you know, reminiscent of, uh, I guess the things that dwarves like hearing, and the dwarves that are nearby sort of recognize him as, uh, not only one of their kin, but one of their kin who is well in tuned with dwarven culture. You know, one of the things that they like to do is they like to grab each other's shoulders and, like, sort of knock heads, like, knock, uh, their foreheads against each other. And, like, you know, there's a couple of phrases that don't translate easily from uh, Dorbish that they like to say to each other. He's kind of, you know, he's mingling. I, I, do speak, I do speak Dorbish. Can I hear what they're, what they're talking about? Uh, there's a f particular phrase that essentially means, uh, uh, how should I put this? Smooth may your stonework be, and uh, straight may your uh, blades be, uh, straight in a straight basically in a straight way may you form your blades you know it, it comes out awkwardly in common but like okay. it's it's basically saying like you know long life good uh, good forge work the best in fact mm. and uh don't forget where you come from that sort of stuff yes as the newfoundlanders would say long may your big jib draw wait what <laughs> <laughs> long may your big jib draw may long may your sails catch the wind oh that sounds yeah, actually really interesting yeah, come to Newfoundland, get screeched in, you'll be an honorary Newfoundlander. That sounds kind of fun. You get two guys. Things to do before you die. But anyway. So Doran, uh, he is going to let you guys know that um, he's going to use his uh, wit and his charm, of course, to uh, get that sweet deal he's been looking for. And uh, as soon as he's got it secured, the plan is to, well, 
they're going to keep it there for him. He's going to he's going to have it set up to where as soon as uh, he gets the horses as well that he's going to get the horses, go get the cart back again and as soon as they come back to uh, as soon as you guys come back to Grumberg, they'll have his supplies ready for him and then they'll he'll be ready to shove off. Okay. So how long do you say it'd probably take a, a day or two? Yeah, a day and a half probably. Okay. But uh, I mean, Doran's pretty happy. He's probably the happiest you've ever seen him. Cuz uh mind you, he was uh how should I say uh he did fall out of favor with the members of his clan and they have uh unfortunately banished him. Not even because he's committed any particularly heinous crime, it's because uh, they called him obsessed with his work. Right. Even right. crazy. So he'll show them. He'll show them who the real crazy ones are. Mm -mm. It's him. <laughs> uh, he's, he's like their equivalent of the ancient aliens guy. <laughs> they were like, we just can't deal with it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the, some of the uh, dwarves seem to have like maybe a, a speciality, like some of them specialize in armor or uh, or, equi or equipment, furniture, stuff like that. Uh, what exactly are you looking for? I'm looking for anyone who might be making he might be making some heavy armor. All right. So I mean, there is an armorsmith, a particularly yes. uh, well-known armorsmith around these parts. A lot of people can attest to his work. All right. Uh, once I find this person, I would like to uh, enter this shop and, you know, f find this master of arm armor smithing to uh, in inquire about a purchase, or future purchase, I should say. All right. <clears throat> I guess it's enter store. Hello. He says, uh, oh, uh, oh. and he's gonna, he's gonna sort of, he's he sort of arched over his. Uh, his forge working something and sort of looks at you with his goggles on. His face is completely blackened with soot. Sort of, sort of like shakes his beard, like shakes all the. I said crumb. I was about to say crumbs, but you know the the pieces of a, uh, of coal out of his beard, like the small bits of it. Sort of like smacks his face a bit to sort of uh, get all the soot off of him. Um. So I will, I will speak. To, actually, you know, what? I'm going to speak to him in dwar in a uh, in dwarvish like. Hello, good sir. I hear you are the best one to talk to about uh, armor making. And he says, uh, the best. I that be me. And he uh, extends a extremely filthy and calloused hand out and says, uh, I am Grammel. Oh, Connor. And from my experience with dwarves, I do, uh, you know, the customary handshake where you grab the, grab the forearms, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yes. Shake his forearm. Now, not 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 gonna lie, it might be fun, fun on funds, but if one were to request full plate armor, and he spends a lot of time traveling, you know, and he runs into some ruffians who might have some some of their own armor and swords and shields, would it be possible to smelt melt those down, and then forge new armor from that? And he says, oh, it's a bit more effort than is required, but I'm." Assuming you mean to have it resized for you. Oh yes, definitely. I know. I'm a I'm a chunky boy, as it is. And he says, uh, "Say no more. Just mm -hmm. bring me the plates, and I'll make them fit." Of course. Well, thank. All right. Uh, that's, that's honestly. Well, thank you for your thank you for your time. I will tip him. Uh, I'll, I'm going to give him two two silver just for just for his time. And he says, uh, oh, oh, no, 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 no. He says, Oh, no, you sure? Oh, oh, okay. And he sort of, uh, he, uh, swallows, uh, some spit just to clear his throat, you know. And basically, he wants to be, say this as clearly as possible. And he says, uh, One of the biggest rules of being a well meaning smith who respects his craft, never mm -hmm. accept gold for something you ain't done. Especially if it ain't forge work. Understandable. I will keep. I will keep that in mind, sir. And when I have the funds, you can expect me to come back. 
and he says, uh, ah, and, yeah, and of course, yeah. and he, uh, gets back to his, uh, I mean, he assumes that you're done talking to him, so he sort of gets back to working his, uh, working his craft. Yeah, I am. I'll, I'll, I'll come, I'll come back to the group. All right. And so Star Boy still just still going around talking to all the dwarven friends. So, so did any of the dwarves seem to recognize him personally? Uh, no, no, they they don't. He's um. That being said, though, he is uh, he is being somewhat careful with who he is associating with. Uh, mm. I'd say uh, there he's. He's met almost every dwarf except like a couple of them, and like he, you can even tell that he's, uh, is he's. I mean, he's trying to be subtle about it, but he's purposely trying to like avoid some. Mm-hmm. Some but, shady uh, characters, maybe. I don't know. I mean, they they do look like regular individuals, you know, regular dwarves. But um, I don't know. He's just acting somewhat uh, averse to them. If that's a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, the other two are like, why don't you? Are you guys looking for anything in particular? That was directed oh. to the group. Right? Oh, yeah, no. Continue. Yeah, sorry. directed to the group. <laughs> well, I do plan on wandering a bit. I should maybe like to get a memento from every uh, every kingdom in the land to commemorate these wanderings. Uh, and he, uh, you know, Marlo sort of pulls up his sleeve, and he's got uh, a rather ornate-looking bangle. He says, this one's from home, but uh, I've yet to get anything from here. So I was thinking about uh, looking around for any jewelers who might commission a piece. But uh, other than that, no, not particularly. Oh, not a nice sentiment, definitely. And how about you, Wally? Wally, what am I saying? Wobbly. Um, I'm good. I like to travel light. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, John, what, do you, what do you expect to get out of this, out of this job? Honestly. Money. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of money. It's definitely, that's definitely a reasonable reason. I'm just wondering, is it the, uh, is it your, is it your only one? And if it is, I'm not, I'm not trying to judge or anything. So like I said, money's wonderful to have. My only job? Well, he's asking if that's your only goal, I should say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe to see a few things and, and make a lot of money, yeah. Mm-hmm. Money is important. Well, yes, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Money can be exchanged for goods and services. Did you know this? I, I, I heard that somewhere. Yeah. Took me a few years to figure that out. It's much more efficient than the uh, bargain economy, mm -hmm. the uh, bartering economy. Yeah, where I grew up, we paid for everything with eggs. So I've been to a place where commerce was conducted principally with chickens. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is, you know, a renewable resource, very tasty. Just carried around carts full of chickens. <clears throat> Doran's going to say, uh, Gentlemen, I understand you're having very lovely, pointless conversations, but now it is time for me to interrupt. I've secured a very wonderful deal. Wonderful. Ooh. My expectations could not possibly be higher. Yeah, so barter man here. And he says, uh, We've got quite a bit of dwarves from, uh, very, uh, how should I say, uh, Particularly powerful clans here. Emissaries from these clans. Trying to make names for themselves in this land. Interesting right. indeed. Mm -hmm. a anyone in particular we should be, you know, keep our keep our eye out for? In case we expect great things from? And he says, uh, well, there is one. Uh, one that I'd actually like you all to meet. If you would be so kind as to join me. Yes, of course. He With said, the other two, like, I uh, don't think we got much, we don't got much better things to do today, do we? I 
don't believe so, and my interest has been piqued. Mm -hmm. He says, <laughs> good, good, good. Can't wait for you to meet them. And, uh... He's gonna bring you over to the house of a, uh... Looks like some sort of a, uh... Well, his, his shop in particular looks to be, uh... He looks to be some sort of a baker. As opposed to just being like a... Like a, any sort of, like, craftsman. Well, I mean, you can argue that cul the culinary arts are kind of craft. Mm -hmm. But, but uh... I say the more traditional dwarfy things, I should say, you know. R.R. Tolkien-esque dwarfy things. Mm -hmm. This would be a bit unique. He, uh... The dwarf here runs a baking shop. And, uh... As soon as you step in, your senses are assaulted with the smell of, uh, you know, basically baked wheat. Baked wheat and very, very dark, hearty uh, smelling beers. There's nothing really sweet smelling. In fact, uh, everything smells pretty rough, I should say, very hearty. Mm. But uh, you've got all kinds of lobes. They go from, you know, whole wheat, quote-unquote, for, I guess for lack of a better word, to, you know, rye, to... Basically, like, you know, they, it... You can kind of tell what kind of bread it is based on the color, and they mostly go from just being brown to, like, very, very dark, almost black. But they're not right. burnt, that's the thing. Wall to wall with these kinds of bread. Some, some of them hang from the ceiling, others sliced up in, uh, you know, in slices. So the dwarf you bring us to is a bakesmith. He says, indeed. But he's got a bit of a proposition for us. Well, I'm really, uh, if you, if you believe, if you trust him, I'm willing to hear him out. He says, uh, he's, uh, Doran's going to bring you up to the place that he, I mean, he's just going to bring you upstairs to to where he lives. I mean, because I guess you can only assume that they've met during your guys' uh, parousing of the Dwarven Quarter. Mm. He knocks on the... Uh, basically, like, there's a stair... Like, there's this set of stairs next to the front uh, sort of stand where the bread is sold. Guides you up there and knocks on uh, the door. There's a... I guess it... it the, the stairs go into, like, a... Just a straight, short... Like, a short, straight hallway. And there's doors on uh, either side of each other, in the sort of midsection of that hallway. He knocks on the one on the left, and uh, you hear a voice from inside uh, say, uh, "Come in." And before you, as soon as he opens the door, is a particularly uh, plump-looking dwarf with a very fat nose, very round set of cheeks, and quite the gut. Not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. This man truly has uh, eaten food, and perhaps has not stopped, to put things lightly. He doesn't look disgusting, though. He, he does actually look fairly well-dressed. Doran says, uh... Ah, Halgus, I'd like you to meet some friends of mine. And he says... Yeah, yeah go on. Yeah, I said like, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll greet him in. I'll, again, I'll greet him in Dwarvish. He says, Ah, the name's Halgus. Pleased to meet you. And uh, he sort of uh, shakes his hand, and he shakes all your hands, and whatnot. Oh, that's a sweaty palm. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Very sweaty indeed. Very sweaty, and he's got, he's definitely got some sausage finger action going on. But. I'll turn to the other two and say, never trust, never trust a skinny baker. And he says, uh, oh, you must forgive me, gentlemen. I've, uh, <coughs> I've been drinking. And, uh, Doran's gonna say, uh, oh, we don't mind that, uh, do we, lads? Not at all. Oh, well, of course not. Did a bit of that last night. <laughs> and, uh, Halgus is going to begin the conversation by just simply saying, 
All right. Very nice to see you, Doran. Very nice to see your companions as well. We here at the Grumberg Dwarf Quarter are very appreciative to see any dwarves from other clans. Of course, of course. Oh, uh, this is obviously... He's uh, by now out of breath, unfortunately, from prolonged conversation. It does look like quite the bit of exercise for him. Well, it's okay. Take your time. And he says, uh, as you know, I have a bit of stature among these dwarves. And after hearing your plight, I'd like to cut you a deal. I see you're in need of metalworking supplies and whatnot, and it would be incumbent upon myself as a bit of a leader of these fine dwarf folk to ask that you commit some effort on behalf of yourself and perhaps even your friends to help us in an hour of dire need. Oh, and uh, he's gonna sit down. You're gonna hear as soon as he like plumps his rear in like a a chair that it definitely was built specifically for him because that's a very wide chair, like a wide seat chair. And as he like of course plops down, you just hear the entire house just start to creak, basically. <laughs> he says, oh, it's, uh, a "It's a service for equipment. I'm not." Gonna lie, but I'm not gonna argue with that. Yep. He says, uh. The deal is as follows You will lend your services on behalf of the good dwarves of the Grumberg Dwarven Quarter. And. And, uh, he is going to, uh. Sort of, uh. He's gonna take, like, a. An eyeglass, like a sort of, uh. Very finely crafted looking uh, monocle of sorts. And, uh, un un uh un almost said unsheath. But he's gonna unfurl a piece of paper that was in his pocket. And he says, uh, In return, you shall have. Uh, yes, this seems agreeable. <coughs> you shall have your pick of at least at most excuse me uh 28 pounds and he's just gonna it's just gonna go on like a list of basically things that the dwarves are willing to part with really like it's it's the dwarves are known for their fickle nature when it comes to things like handouts, quote-unquote. Because this isn't really much of a handout because you're working for it. Mm. But uh, he's being very specific with the amount of everything that you can get from doing this. Because he's... I mean, as you can see, he's obviously quite the successful businessman. I mean, look at him. He's, he's huge. But anyway... Uh, he's going to finish listing off all the things that Doran is able to get. During this time, Doran's sort of shuffling his hands. He's sort of like, you know, very restless and sort of giddy. And he says, uh, gentlemen, as your employer, it is uh, my duty to see to it that uh, your well-being is uh, maintained and kept safe and yada yada. yada. Please do this for me, please. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. My my microphone must have backed down or something. So, what what is what is our do you, what is our part in this arrangement? He says. Uh, and Adoran says uh, he sort of regains his professional-looking composure from uh, groveling before you all. And he says, uh, "Indeed, Halgus, what task shall we be performing?" And uh, Doran's gonna sort of slightly chuckle and whisper to you guys, "How bad can this be?" <laughs> Halgus is going to say, uh, I would like for you all to slay a beast. 
A beast that has haunted the hills towards the north for some time. And Got any details on that beast? And uh, he says, uh, indeed it is. <coughs> it is a manticore. Mm. I'm aware of these. Doran's gonna say, uh, whoa, 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 uh, a manticore. And, uh, you know, Halgus is going to nod his head. Jowls flapping as he does so. Hmm. And, uh, Doran's going to say, uh, oof. That's. That is quite, quite the order. Oof, a manticore. I'll give a hearty laugh and say, huh, Thorn, it sounds like you don't think we can do it. What's a manticore? Ah, uh, a manticore. Seen a couple of them in my days back at Iron Keep. Nasty creatures. Monstrosities. You see, they have the uh, face of a man, body of a, a lion, and a barbed tail shoots spikes three rows of teeth. It's horrible. These things are terrible mm. creatures. Man, the only thing that could make that worse is if it could fly. <laughs> that would be terrible. Oh, that would suck. And, uh, Doran sort of scratches his beard and sort of, uh, looks at Halgus and says, Can they fly? And Halgus says, They indeed can fly. Ah, oh, okay. Hmm. And, uh, that's uh, that's an image that I'm not gonna forget. Doran uh, says, "Ooh, he's gonna." He's of course going to mill through his beard once again and say, uh, "August, I would like time to speak amongst my fellow, uh, my fellows here. <clears throat> we are going to discuss." Our next action, and we will converse in a very dignified manner, debilitating the potential pros and cons of this situation. And uh, I shall present my case in a fair and meaningful manner. And uh, he says, We shall be back. And he's gonna escort you guys down to the ground floor, and he's basically gonna get on his knees and say, Please. Please kill the manticore. I need this. Whoa. Oh, boss, boss, please get up. Stand up. I pick him up to his feet and be like, just... Well, I can't speak for these two, but I'd be more than willing to slay a terrible beast. We just need to figure out some kind of plan on what we're going to do. Maybe... I don't know, Sounds it's really hard to punch. It does. But if we had a net and some bait. That's what I'm thinking. Doran sort of scratches his uh, beard once again. <clears throat> and uh, he says, uh, <clears throat> hmm. Now, this would be quite the. I mean, I've. I've never been hunting before. But it sounds like we could. It sounds like we could actually make use of that elf that we had met before in this situation. Mm. If he is be willing to assist us, oh. that is. The one that tried to kill us. He says, tried and indeed failed. He's gonna kill a manticore. He thinks to himself, uh, I don't know. Perhaps I... he could lend his assistance if he'd be willing but again, but what, what, wait, what's in this for us? I don't understand. He said, well, basically, like, uh, Halgus wants you to slay the manticore, so Doran can basically get free shit. Okay. It's like, Doran, like, gave him his shopping list, basically. Yeah. And he was, like, reading off the shopping list, like, what they would give. So, so Doran, him. what's in this for us? And, uh,. <clears throat> Doran's going to say, oh, yes, yes, of course, um, 
and uh, he's gonna think to himself like, uh, hmm. give me one second, and he's going to rush back upstairs into Halgus's uh, house, and he's going to, you know, you're just gonna hear a lot of dwarven chatter and whatnot. Yeah, while they're while they're up there uh, negotiating, I was going to say uh, I have never slain a great beast before, so I'm excited to undertake it. But um, I agree, I am somewhat concerned with both of your uh, ability to actually engage with it. Should it fly? Fly. Flying lion with teeth, <laughs> lots of extra teeth and spikes sounds like a bad time. Uh, it makes for a tremendous story, uh, surely, but um, I wouldn't well, mind talking to the rest of the town first. Mm -hmm. uh, surely if it's that big of a concern, others will know something about it. Perhaps we could corner it in a, in a cave or uh, lure it into some yeah. sort of trap. Definitely but a trap. Uh, yes, just, um, I don't know. Jumping at it doesn't seem terribly heroic. That's true. Here's the thing. If we need bait, we need it to be somewhat big. We need to be loud to attract attention. How do you... Because I'm not exactly a big fan of them. What's your opinion on dogs? This is a stray dog. That may be our best bet, unless we want to spend money getting a goat or something. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> well, I was going to, like, a silent image, like uh, a random dog with just the saddest puppy dog eyes you've ever seen. It's like, you would feed this to a terrifying, flying, clawed, man-faced lion with spike tails? Uh, well, no, it's an illusion. Can can you make can can you make it bark? Uh can let's see here. Can he? <laughs> it's silent yes. image, so I don't well, think so. I mean, with oh, no. the combination of other spells that are not concentration spells, yes. He can also make loud noises. Okay. Mm. Doran's gonna burst out of the shop panting very hard, and he's gonna say, uh so, I asked, apparently, there is actually a bounty on this beast's head. Mm. A, b a bounty by Lord Brockthorne himself. Uh, the man whose, uh, whose man's honor you besmirch. Love that word. Mm. Bounty Wonderful. sounds more your speed, eh, Wobbly? Yeah, sure. As I'm long as there's money involved. involved. Yeah. You could sell the sell the pelt as well. It's an option. Indeed. He says <clears throat> Algus says uh, that if we bring the beast's head to Lord Brockthorn, that he may compensate us. Okay. Alright, well here's my idea. Better than a dog. If you can create an image of just a person, I'm assuming these things eat more people than dogs. So maybe if you can create something that looks like a person, just have some very loud screaming that would at least attract the beast, then we would just need to find a way to keep keep it from being airborne. I think that's our main object. That's our main problem here. And he says, uh, indeed, uh, well, Doran says, indeed, if the creature were airborne, it could very easily just rain hell on top of us. Mm -hmm. Well, on, mm -hmm. on top of you. Yeah, well, true. You're, you're a lover, not a fighter. Uh, illusion work is my strong suit, and I can strike from a range, but... I don't believe I have any means of grounding such a beast. I have javelins. 
Do I have I a spell that can let it. me... You can punch it, that's true. Punching is great. But I have a spell that will allow me to momentarily control its mind. So that could be something. If I could, if it, if the spell could work, I could just say, land. And it'll land. It's an option. But I really think we should invest in a net. Um, how how big is this thing? Uh, they are like uh, well, they are large creatures. I'll just say it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying Connor has heard of Manticores, but you know, would, would he recognize the size? Maybe. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, it's the, the anybody would tell you that it's basically like the size of like a winged horse, or anybody yeah. who's fought them would say like it's a like a winged horse, just like more vicious. Yeah. Obviously. Horse size. Exactly. Horse size. Exactly. That would need to be a, a large net. Well, most definitely. Let me see. Uh, let me look at like what nets actually do for a second. Mm -hmm. A large or smaller creature hit by a net is restrained until it's freed. Okay, so I mean, it's not unfeasible. Are these manticores, are they crafty? Are they, uh, I, I imagine to get a net on it, we're going to have to sneak up on it. Are they particularly wary or? Well, Doran says, uh, perhaps we should, uh, ask around about this manticore. Uh, Halgus had said, oh yeah, uh, he was going to say, Halgus has said that it's killed, uh, he's killed about, uh, um, let me think, what did he say? Says he's killed about four miners last summer. Mm. Oh no, not the children. Uh, <laughs> uh, funny. But I know what you mean. Hmm. Here's what I'm thinking. Maybe if you guys can ask about the manticore, I can ask about equipment that we can use to you use to trap it. Obviously, the net. But another idea just came to my mind. What if I went to a butchery, got some blood, so then it'll be even more convincing sight, sound, and smell. Bada bing, bada boom. Which I've heard someone say before. Ah, yes. Fooling all the senses. Mm -hmm. Until it gets to touch, but that's the one that we can worry about later. Ah, yes. Touch. My mortal enemy. Mm hmm <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I've generally found that if it gets to touch, something has gone wrong. Mm. Indeed. Because, you know, every time we touch, I just get this feeling. <laughs> every time. <laughs> cool. anyway, we'll yeah. <laughs> Alright, so, in that case, I think, uh, yeah, I don't want, yeah, I don't want to, like, break away from the group right now, so, yes, would you want, do you want to ask, uh, ask the town about this manticore? Maybe find our elf compatriots? I'll, and I'll, I'll find some equipment. Any, why uh, don't we uh, why don't we begin at the church? They seem keen to talk in your presence, and uh, there seem to be a lot of people gathered in one place. That is true. Okay, uh, give me a minute. I gotta get into character. Oh, that's by all means. Kind of just like, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Doran's gonna say, uh, I was uh, caught up in the heat of the moment there. Uh, I was quite afraid that we wouldn't be able to get this uh, job done. If, uh, but uh, <clears throat> I just want to emphasize once again, gentlemen, that uh, I have I have the money. Uh, it, this circumstance just makes our situation all the more better, I'd say. But. Uh, if and you believe that this is not something that you wish to do, then I understand. And uh, on the elf, I was only, I'd say again, I was, I was fairly desperate. If you don't mm. believe that we can truly trust him, then perhaps it'd be best if we did this by ourselves. Mm. I mean, I'd, it's, it's always good to have an extra hand when dealing with these kinds of creatures, but... You know, I, I guess I just want to apologize for uh, not seeming uh, concerned and uh, that kind of thing. Well, Doran, do you have any suggestions how we can take down this 
flying lion sized monster when when uh Connor and I primarily focus our our martial expertise so to speak in uh, relatively close quarters he says uh well <clears throat> I'd reckon that a well, I'd reckon that uh let me think Because if not, it seems like we're going to need some help to do this, if this is what you're looking to get done. He says, uh, well, if we can't get someone who's specialized in ranged firepower, then I'd say our best hope would be to corner it in his lair. But the problem is that can prove dangerous. Mm. Entire dwarven armies that I've heard stories of have been wiped out trying to destroy dragons in their lair before. The, la the lair of a great beast is truly somewhere where you wish not to, to fight it. So, though I may not trust them as much as you may not all, perhaps it would not be unwise to enlist the help of this mysterious stranger. He did seem willing to... He did seem willing to lend it, at least. Yeah, maybe we'll have we'll maybe put that in, we'll definitely put it in consideration. Yes, I agree. First another, things first. Another thought, Go on. along with a net. What about a snare? We have we have the bait. We snare the and we have uh, we can find out some way to put on a snare so that when the if a manticore attacks. He'll be trapped, and even if he takes, even if he takes off, he'll be more no more than, no more than ten feet off the ground. Manticores are ravenous creatures. They will attack with reckless abandon if it means that they will secure a meal or ensure the suffering of some poor creature. That may work. Mm. Okay, okay. So, cops and hands. I'm ready to go to the church, if that's what you wanted to do. Doran says, uh, don't worry, I won't. I'll, st I'll keep them from touching you. Thank you. But I'll do, I'll, I'll do, I'll do my best. You know. <clears throat> Alright. <clears throat> so, if I may, uh, go on. they are seeking a reason to celebrate so that they can pass their torches around. Accomplishing this will give them just such an opportunity. Perhaps uh, presenting it in that light will make them keen to offer up whatever support they can. Mm hmm. I getcha. I getcha. I never thought. I never thought of that. So I'll put that into my. I, I have down notes of like lines that I might say to them. So like, okay. <laughs> Ask about supply. Okay. I will also preface by saying that you guys in the party stash have one health potion. And I'll, I'll justify me saying that by saying that Doran would just say it, basically. Okay. It's not that we'll need it. I guarantee 100% <laughs> success. <laughs> But Doran likes this plan, so he's gonna follow your lead into the uh, into the Church of the Disciples of the Flame. And Marlo will uh will give guidance to uh to Connor before he goes in, in case he needs to look particularly regal. That lasts okay. like ten minutes, I think, <clears throat> or one minute. So you know, basically a dramatic entry, I guess. One action, concentration, one minute. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, what do you do as soon as you get into the get into the church? All right. So, I'll clock in. Say, blessings of Urzar be upon you all. Me and my compatriots require knowledge and possibly aid to help you in these times. Help us help you, but I don't actually say that last part. And they all say. So, well, I mean, I guess the leader of the congregation says, uh, 
more blessings have presented us, presented them to us, presented mm. themselves to us. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're, we're, we're all tripping over our own tongues. Yeah, it's fun. It's the fun part of D&D. But uh, it is a woman garbed in a uh, very regal robes, golden white linens with a uh, what looks to be some sort of a... Uh, let me think for a second. Um, you've seen the... I don't know if any of you seen the headdresses of the pharaohs. Not the not the ones that... Uh, like the ones that kind of look like uh, basins on their heads. I think so. Well, it's because... I mean, how about this? It just it basically looks like, you know, the Pope's hat, but it's not, like, coned at the front. It just looks like a... It just looks like a wide bowl, basically, on their, on their head. Okay, so it's a t the tall ones, not the wide ones? Uh, I'd say it's not very tall, but it definitely is a little bit more wide. It just just okay. think of like a bowl, basically, but like a, a bowl with like sharp like a sharp angle, not okay. not like like a, a round bottom, like just like a one that's just jettisoned straight out. Mm. Yep. I say we we've been tasked to slay a terrible beast that have apparently killed some some of your number. There's a, a, a manticore by by chance. We wish to know which, which where. Where was this? Where's this being most beast mostly seen? Where's the where have mostly attacks taken place? And uh, <clears throat> the the uh, the head of the congregation. She introduces herself as uh, Helena, and she says, uh, "We have worked tirelessly to offer comfort." To the families of the deceased. This vile creature has more than once attacked the working men of this fair village. In apparently one particular spot, a uh, pit mine. And uh, I say pit mine, but it's uh, uh, the way she, the, she describes it. It's basically like just an area where people dig, basically. Like, you know, dig and like do mine work. It's not particularly deep on the ground but it is on top of the the hill like uh i'll just like i'll put like a x on it uh give me one second this works i'll just put like this red flag on it oh that is on the gm layer okay there we oh, go my... right there i see i see has the has the beast claimed any of the mines as its own or is it just patrolling the area? We do not know where the beast lives, unfortunately. Fair enough. Fair. Lord Brockthorn has more than once patrolled the area with his men and have found nothing. Hmm. Maybe you should go talk to Lord Brockthorn and just go where he hasn't. Um, we are in search of a net. Net and... Well, no, we, we got rope. I got red. We, do we have rope? Guys, do we have rope? You should have rope. Like, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, yeah. pretty much all of you should have rope, I think. Yeah, like, as far as facts, I, I'll say we have rope. So let's just say, yes, in, in, search, in search of a net. If anyone has such equipment to to volunteer for this, uh, for this hunt. <clears throat> and, uh... She, uh, Helena, just, uh, asks, like, she asks one of her disciples to venture out in the village to, uh, ask one of the townsfolk for a net, one of the townsfolk that they may know who has one, and, uh, hmm. basically just tells him to give it the excuse that it is a, a mission ordained by the holiest of holies. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank, thank you for your help. You'll, you'll be sure to bring back a... Would, we will be sure to be back a trophy of this of this terrible beast. And she says, uh, Indeed, I believe you shall. For this meeting, I have seen in a dream, I must say. Mm. I oh. knew that someone would come by and rid us of the troubles that we have faced. Not just here, but everywhere. <clears throat> as uh, as somebody who sees things in dreams, uh, does Marlo like believe, or is she just saying this to make herself seem more uh, mystic 
in front of her disciples. Uh, I guess you can roll an insight check, and I'll give you advantage. Oh, well. yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a solid. One. It's a solid nat one. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> but um, she says, uh, "Well, no. Um, I mean, you can tell that she might be stretching it a bit, but uh, it seems that uh, she, at the very least, uh, she, at the very least, has made the. Uh, how should I say? Let me, let me let me put this in words that actually make sense. Whether or not she's like truly had a dream that's like." had this whole event spread out verbatim is uh, hard to necessarily discern, but um, she definitely seems that she anticipated that somebody would help out, I should say, eventually. All right. Which doesn't... It's, I mean, that doesn't really say much. Because, I mean, eventually someone would have come by and stopped the, the magic or but, you know. Mm -hmm. So, in short, I mean, there is... She's, she's not, a, she's not a, a fraud. Yeah. But she might be stretching it a bit. Which, you know, it's all it's all about the smoke and the mirrors. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's that's all I had to say. I guess I'll ask, just ask her like which is uh we're just looking for the closest butchery. And she says, uh <clears throat> There is one in town. You should not be able to miss it if you and she just sort of like Tells you the general direction of where it is. All right, lovely. You say I shouldn't be able to miss it. I'm very oblivious. So we'll be, yeah, we'll, we'll see. But I thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I suppose we'll be back within uh, uh, before we go out to see if uh, see if Annette has been delivered. If not, no pressure. Uh, the and disciple yeah. uh, returns. And, uh, <clears throat> he has a net on him and says, uh, For you, my lord, a net that the local hunters use to capture game. Please slay this beast for us. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, so how, how, how big is this net? Do you think maybe we might have to add weights to it or something, anything? Oh, uh, no, I mean, it's just a regular net. Okay. All right. Well, we thank you for your service. We expect to see us again. And in the words of Urzar, always be excellent. <clears throat> yeah, you know, the the guy mm. who just gave you the nets just uh, like goes to his other uh, his other accomplices and says, "Uh, well, I can't believe he touched me. Oh, I'm never washing this hand again." <laughs> <laughs> stuff like weird, creepy stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh man. Ellen, as, as we're leaving, it's just like this, yeah. that's like. Are they are they a cult at this point? Do I have a cult? Oh no, it is not. This may, might not be a cult for you necessarily, but the, there is definitely a cult surrounding the uh, the flame that they're referencing. Okay. But anyway, Helena says before you leave, uh, "We shall keep you in our prayers, Dragonborn." Thank you. Know that you walk in Urza's name, and are graced by his presence forever. And I work every day to honor that honor. And it's like, oh crap, it, it wore off, it wore off, aboard, aboard! <laughs> so, as we're leaving, uh, I'll turn to the others and like, so, so yeah, so, what do, you, what do you guys think of this? Rope, snare, blood, do you, uh, uh, do you have any input for how to, how, how to catch this thing? <clears throat> Doran uh, says, uh, everything, everything you're doing sounds good so far. Wobbly, Marlo, uh, copper for your thoughts? Uh, when we got a net, how, how do we keep the net on it? How does it not just fly out of it? Well, I suppose the idea of the net is to surround its wings... Perhaps keep it on the ground long enough for the two of you to grievously wound it. Um, if you injure it enough, uh, it may have trouble staying airborne, or it may flee, and then we could 
follow it to its lair and finish it. But, um, I mean, there's no perfect solution to dealing with something that can fly when none of us can. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a certain, there was a hunting technique by these indigenous peoples that I met long, long ago. They would tie rocks to get, they would have like lengths of ropes and tie two heavy objects, each one. They would twirl around, around their head, and as they throw, the rocks would, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of tie themselves around their prey, often tripping up their legs, maybe breaking a bone. That's honestly what I was thinking that we could do for for the wings. So it's not so easy for the manticore to just, you know, claw, teeth, <coughs> lift, free. Sorry. sorry. Doran's That's what gonna, I'm thinking. Doran's going to say, oh, we have something similar that we use to take down giants. Well, oh yeah. And the boys would use to take down giants back in Iron Keep. Well, well, great minds think alike, and fools seldom differ. He says, uh, "Can I ask you something real quick, there, Connor? Mm -hmm. Does that ever get annoying?" Does, does what? The fact that fools seldom differ. I said, oh, oh, no, um, the whole, uh, the whole, uh, Urza stuff. Oh. Uh, it's, especially as of late, like, for all, it's only the past few years that I've, that I've run into folks like that. And, you know, they run up to me and they say, uh, say oh, you are a messenger from the gods. You are here to solve all of our problems. And don't get me wrong, I love... I love people. I love helping them. But they treat me like something infallible, something perfect, something incorruptible. Like, well, I can't say incorruptible, but, you know, that's something perfect that's not me, you know? I, I'm not capable of doing anything. And some of these people look to me to solve their, pro solve their problems, which, to be honest, sometimes, I may, sometimes it's only me that can do it, but sometimes they themselves... Well, are more than able to do it, but they look to someone they see as higher to to assist them. You know, you know what I mean. Uh, Doran's like, uh, uh, w w would it make you feel better if I said sure? <laughs> I uh, understand. I have dealt with a lot of fools making deals that. They ended up regretting because they were afraid to take responsibility for their own lives. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know it's it's just it's, it just it just kind of sucks that you know like you uh, you think these people are in need and often okay, not to say people are in need aren't actually in need because often they are and I'm more than help more than willing to help them out, but then you also got those people who's like, hey, help me move a couch. You can move a couch, okay? It's not that bad. <laughs> Unless you're like an 85-year-old man, but that, that's that's beside the point. That's beside the point. Doran's gonna... Right. Doran's gonna, like, sort of elbow you in the, lightly in the side, wobbly, and say, uh, this lad needs a drink. Oof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am pretty thirsty. Maybe some water later. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, so, the butchery? The, the local butcher, he says, uh, so, y you only want blood. Yes, blood, and preferably some kind of sealable container. You see, we're trying to tra attract a beast, and we don't want it to be attracted to us before we're ready, you know what, you know what I mean? He sort of, uh, raises an eyebrow at you and says, uh, 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 uh all right, um... And uh, he's just gonna, he's gonna do that thing where he's just like, oh, what am I supposed to do? Like, you know that, you know that motion that you we do when you have like both of your palms open, like, like facing the <laughs> ceiling, and then you sort of shrug your shoulders. He's just, he's just like, uh, uh, he's gonna like take like a, a clay jar that he's got lying around. He's gonna hear a bunch of like rummaging in, in the in the back. He's gonna clip in the back rooms, but but uh, he goes in the back room here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's, he's testing out the, all the uh, the weapons in D&D &D lore. 
But no, anyway. It's, it's, it's silly fucking obscure me. But anyway. He says, uh... Um... Uh, well, here's a, here's a jar. Or... I guess this is with the inner. And he... He just takes like a, a cloth that he uses to sort of like wipe down like surfaces, and he just like squeezes a bunch of blood in it, and like he's just like, um, no, it's not much, but uh, I mean, oh, need any more? I, I I think this is enough. Like you would say, I would say like the the amount of blood in the jar. <laughs> Let's say if if a human was to l lose that much blood, they would be injured but still alive. I'm guessing. He's gonna say, uh, um, uh, sure, sure, yeah. Okay, I'm not a psychopath, I swear to you, I swear. And, uh, with that, I'm gonna, uh, I'm assuming the, this isn't the same as, like, the, the Dwarven Quarter, so I'll give, I'll give him a silver for his, for his service. Silver, his, silver for his blood. <laughs> silver for your blood, sir. He's gonna take it, and he's gonna be like, uh, thank you. And he's gonna make sure that it's real, because you guys seem really weird. Mm. And he's, as soon as he realizes mm -hmm. it's real, he's gonna say, uh, uh thank you very much. And he's gonna oh, go back to you. his work. Alright, uh, as I exit, I'm like, okay, we got the blood, we got the rope, and we got the net. Uh, do we need anything else before we before we go out? And Doran's going to say, how about some, uh, overall enthusiasm? I am cautiously <laughs> optimistic. <laughs> Doran's I'm going... excited. I just keep a steady face. Doran's going to say, uh, I believe in you, gentlemen. I'll be rooting for you. Oh, thank you, Doran. Well, I, um, I believe, I believe in our capabilities. We survived a necro storm. We can survive a manticore. He, he says, he's "Ooh, got this. Adorn's gonna say, "Ooh, I remember the necro storm. That was really interesting." It was actually. I'm still curious to see what caused it, but uh, more pressing matters, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Indeed. All right. So these uh, these folk have said that. The manticore is to be found in the hills, so... Well, I suppose right. that's where we must venture. Um, so as we're going out, I kind of talked to Marlo, so like, so you can create illusions, and while you create those illusions, you can make sounds? Is that right? Yes. I can create an illusion which requires a great deal of concentration. And I can move it if I need to. Um, but once I have it in place, uh, it's not too much trouble to create sounds, uh, as long as they're fairly simple ones. Uh, a scream I could do, a conversation might be hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, I'm thinking if we find a cave, because this might make the, help make the sound a little bit louder. Find a cave. Put in the illusion. Fill the blood. I guess we would kind of have to find, make sure that we have a place to hide once the manticore arrives. And then, if we if it's in the cave, it's not going to be flying much. So that's a thing. Uh, any, any thoughts, gentlemen? Uh... <coughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I it's hard to assess without seeing where it is. Hmm. Why don't we head into the hills and uh, take a look at the terrain and, and find a place suitable? It would be easier to corner it in a cave. Uh, mm -hmm. A cornered Beast is generally more dangerous, but uh, it would solve uh, one but problem. But so are we. Doran's gonna say, uh, well, we'd, we'd of course have to find a cave first. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe a day, maybe, maybe a few hours of just scouting around the loca, scouting around the landscape, just to f find the find the perfect one. We need every advantage we can get, quite honestly. All right. Um, Ryan, do you have to leave soon? Yeah, I gotta wrap up in like three minutes. You got it. Okay. I mean, I mean. Okay, how about this? Uh, everyone, roll a tried and true investigation. Seventeen. Mm, I don't have it on my sheet. So, is is investigation uh, intelligence? Yes, it is. All right, I'll just roll intelligence. Two. <laughs> I get a nosebleed. <laughs> Seeing's hard. Mm -hmm. Alright, uh... <clears throat> Wobbly, you find... How should I put it? Scouting along the, uh, this hilled area. You do find a... It's a very small cave. It looked to be, like, maybe abandoned to where maybe, like, some bears used to live. <clears throat> they might have gotten, uh, they might have left the cave, like, abandoned it after, uh, the Manticore might have came in. You can tell that it's not his cave, like, the Manticore's cave, because there's no, like, there's no, like, stuff lying around, there's no, like, bones, whatever. It's just kind of like an empty space. You can tell that there are, um, there's marks where, where, like, pickaxes and other tools have been sort of, like, whittling away at the stone. But, uh... I, uh, needless to say, you, you find the place that you were looking for, or the thing that you were looking for. But, one thing that, uh, I'd say you find the cave, but while the rest of you are looking about, uh, Connor, and, uh, Connor, uh, Doran, and Marlo, while you're, uh, sort of walking along the side of the hill, sort of searching, a, uh, an arrow not very close, well, not very far, I should say, but close enough for you to actually see, lands nearby in the in the way of your stepping. And, uh, as after it lands, you guys hear a whistle uh, up in the trees nearby. I'm sorry, uh, what landed? Oh, it's just like, it's just a whistle, not in any language. Oh, okay. No, I thought you said something landed in front of us. Oh, an arrow did. Like, an arrow basically, oh. like, uh, landed not not too far close to where it's like you're in danger of being, like, you know. It wasn't like a warning shot. It was just something to get your attention. And afterwards, oh, okay. after you heard it, you heard a whistle coming from uh, a nearby tree. Well, I will, I will look towards the tree. And uh, you see the elf that you had uh, previously encountered. Oh, you again. It's good to know you truly know how to greet a person. I was walk towards them, uh, walk towards the elf, like, uh, have you heard from the town? So, what what are you doing out here, friend? He says, uh, well, this is the area that I mentioned that we should meet, should you be ready. Uh, oh, yeah, it is. Oh, it is. Okay. This is a complete coincidence, then. Uh, we're, we're on the hunt for, we're on the hunt for a manticore. For for the trophy, have you um, have you perchance seen seen this? Know where its lair is? He says, a manticore. He says, now that you mention it, and uh, he sort of uh, sort of like takes a look around, and he sort of uh, smells the air and says, uh, you hear that? And he sort of puts his ears up to the wind. I mean, you you don't hear. I mean, I'll just say right now, you can you can roll a perception check, but you really can't hear anything. Yeah, I'm guessing that means like I can't. You can't hear any birds. You can't hear any rodents or anything. Squirrels. He says, "Yes, exactly. No yeah. wildlife." I wasn't looking for a manticore, but now that you mention it, it does sound like there's something here that is a lot mm. scarier. Than your typical flying creature. 
That is very true. I mean, have you ever have you seen their faces? It's terrifying. And their tails? <clears throat> he says, uh I know we may have met on slightly disagreeable terms, but if in you have a need for someone who is I suppose useful in a hunt such as this, then I would not mind lending my services to you. I will be around in this area. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll look to the others and say, we do need every advantage. And I look back to him like, I can also understand if you don't want to you know, make it public that you were hunting this thing, so we can definitely... I can't speak for these two, but I'd be willing to offer part of my cut of the reward to offer to you. He says, it is not necessary. The fact that you're out here looking for a manticore says... Well, all that needs to be said, for me, at least. He says, uh... He looks towards you specifically, Marlo, and says, uh... Please forgive me for the way I had treated you before. I was only looking to protect my lord. You gentlemen seem to be of <coughs> at least positive, reasonably positive origin. So... If it means I, that... Yeah, sorry, go on. There's no need to apologize. I understand what it's like to uh, be bound to the service of another. I have done things that perhaps I question morally. Uh, you've been in a situation in this land where almost everyone is an enemy for some time, so I understand. There's no hard feelings, you know, just... Don't do it again, and we're fortunate that uh, you were foiled. He says, I agree. And uh, from there, uh, I guess we can close off this session. All right, then. We show... On the... Yeah, go on. On the hunt. Yes, on the hunt. We shall reconvene here on the 9th of March. Sounds good to me. All right, guys. Everyone have a yep, good night. That works. And remember, always be excellent. <laughs> Wait, is the Ides of March the 6th or 7th of March? I think it's the 7th. Let's find out. Google. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, yeah. thanks for playing, guys. Really appreciate it. Not a problem. Yeah, thank thanks you. for having us. Oh, the 15th. So we were We were both off. All right. Well, everyone have a good night. So I'll talk to y'all later. See you, dude. Yeah, Bye. good night. Thank you for the game. All right. And the rest of you, or anyone who's still watching at least, I hope all of you have a good night as well. Thank you so much for watching.